Hello everybody, welcome to another one of Precision Machinery's Tech Tips. I'm Josh. Now I know when it comes to saws and saw filers, many of you have the same attitude as these little quackers right here. The more water, the better. Well, we've been doing some testing here at Precision and what we found is it's highly unlikely you always have enough water. Come with me and I'll show you what I found. So what we have laid out here is we have one of our lube systems and we've got it connected to a couple of plastic manifolds, which I'll talk about in a little bit. This lube system here is laid out for a quad or an edger, but it's great for what we want to show you here today. So one of the other things I have is one of my favorite sawmill components, a saw guide. So all saw guides have holes that allow fluid and oil to flow into the guide pocket area. Most guides have at least two holes on each guide pad. Now that hole varies in size depending on how your guides are set up. A very common size is 330 seconds. How much though does a 330 second orifice or hole pass at standard water pressure? Well, let's find out. I've got this plug here, it's got a 330 second hole in the end of it. And let's see how much flow at 80 PSI that will allow past it over the course of a minute. Now that was only 30 seconds of fill time, but in 30 seconds, we passed three liters of water. That's just under a gallon. So what that means is that in one minute, we'll pass almost two gallons of water out of a single 330 second hole at 80 PSI. Now let's go back to talking about our guide. This particular guide has two ports on each side of it. So that's four holes per saw. If we have a 10 saw stack, that would be 40 holes in that stack, capable of passing almost 80 gallons of water a minute. None of us are doing that. So how do we overcome that problem? Historically, we've fed our guide systems with air, oil, and water. And air was considered a mixing device. A lot of people have removed it in the past years. Water is to cool the saw, oil is to give it some lubricity when it's sliding over the top of that Babbitt pad. I've maintained for a long time that air is a very important part of these systems. And there's been some debate about that. We've got better delivery methods. We have better oils. Air is expensive. Well, let's see what happens without air. Let's see what happens with air. And let's see if there's something we can do to make that even better yet. So this is my plastic manifold here that I've laid out. We've laid this out to imitate a 10 saw stack. So we've got 11 tubes to indicate 11 guides. This port size here is equivalent to four 330 second holes. Now, if you have larger holes or more ports, that's going to drop more flow. We've established that we can't possibly feed enough water to supply that entire set of ports. So we're going to be starving the system. Well, what happens when the system is starving? So we're gonna put some water into the system here. We're gonna put about half a gallon a minute of water to that guide stack. So right away we can see what happens. Water travels the path of least resistance. And you can see that part of the stack is getting nothing. And even the part of the stack that's getting something, even the slightest amount of back pressure, the weight of that prevents flow from going to that guide. Well, that's a problem. Let's see what happens when we add air. What you're gonna notice is that air helps to equalize the flow across that stack. I'm going to do the same thing where I lift that up and show you what happens when you have a blockage because again, even with air in the system, that column of water will hold flow back. But let's see. So now with air in the system, we can see that we are getting water across our entire stack. So that's a huge improvement. Even with that in mind, it doesn't take much to prevent flow from happening to different parts of the stack. Again, we can see here where just the column of water itself is preventing flow from coming out that guide. So you get, a, you get some oil built up in the line or any situation, maybe you're not running a horizontal, maybe you're running vertically, you're going to be starving certain parts of your saw stack. Air makes it better, but could we do something even more? And the answer is yes, we can. 
What we've developed over the last years is what we call flow control. And what flow control is, is a special little valve that we put into the saw guide. And what this valve does, as flow increases past this valve, it starts to close up. And as flow decreases, it opens. So we can set them for any flow rating you want. If we take and put the correct size valves in your guide stack, we can ensure that flow is going evenly throughout the stack. And that valve goes in your guide just like this. Nicely installed. So we have that flow valve in your guide. What does that look like when we put it to test in a situation like this? Well, we have this other manifold over here. And in this manifold, you can see that we have our flow control valves inside of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we have set up on the other side. We're going to give it about half a gallon of water a minute. Not a huge amount, we know we're starving, but notice what happens. We're getting flow across the entire stack. Even though we're starved, it's, it's working its way evenly along. Unlike this other stack here, where we're again only getting flow to part of this guide system. Nice and even. Well, let's add air to take it up one more level. Now what happens when we get that small blockage like we had on this side? I'll try not to get too wet here, but I don't know if you can see what's happening there, but it is still forcing that air-water mixture past the valve and out the end of that guide stack. So what does that mean practically? It means that in situations where we know we don't have enough water to properly feed our guides, or where we want to reduce water. Let's say we would like our sawdust to be a little bit drier because the pellet mill down the road wants that. Or we live in an environment where we can't have piles of water in the basement underneath our gang saw. Well, flow control will help us to run minimal amounts of water while still distributing it equally across the stack. And if you don't want to do flow control, at the very least, you have to have air. So thanks for taking the time to watch our little demonstration. If you have any questions, please reach out. I'm Josh, this has been Tech Tips, and remember, if you want precision results, you gotta have precision machinery.